Hi Dynamic students, this is Dr. Dan Baker with the next video here in the Rigid Body Motion series looking at the relative velocity of a four bar linkage. If you haven't watched the previous video which took a look at the basic equation for relative velocity then that, that might be valuable. That basic equation is the following. We can say that the velocity of b is equal to the velocity of a as a vector plus the velocity of b relative to a. Okay, and as we talked about in the previous video, we can also write this as the velocity of b is equal to the velocity of a plus my omega of a b as a vector. Go ahead and cross that with the position vector r of b relative to a. Now, one important thing to note is whatever your subscripts are in your velocity or even acceleration vectors as we get into those, it's going to be the exact same subscripts for your um, position vector that's related to that. Okay, so all um, velocity of b relative to a is going to be based upon a position vector of b relative to a. So let's take a look at this four bar linkage. We'll kind of work through it piece by piece. First, I want to go ahead and define what we're talking about here. We have three separate rigid bodies. We have body OA, body AB, body BD. Each of these are rigid members. You cannot get any longer, cannot get any shorter. They're not going to flex, break, or bend. They are connected by two different moving pins. So we have pin A connecting OA and AB. We also have another moving pin here at point B. And then we have two fixed axes. So a fixed axis here at C and another fixed axis over at point O. Now when I say fixed axes, I mean that point A and point C cannot move but the bodies are free to rotate around those two points. So let's take a look. I got an uh, interactive down here below that we can look at the overall motion of this system, just can give you an idea of these rigid members and these moving pins. And so if I grab a hold of point B right here, if I move it up, the whole system has to move with it. Okay, so if we raise it up, the body has to, every body has to move. If I drop it down, everything has to move all in harmony, all together. Okay, so that gives you an idea of these fixed axes and these two moving pins. So we'll scroll back up here. Now we're also going to look at the position vectors. Okay, so the position vectors from a fixed point up here to point A, we can write this as either R of A or R of A relative to O, but point O is fixed. So we'll just go ahead and leave that R of A. We can write this here, my R of B. And then my relative position vector. I'm going to keep this going in the same direction I wrote my equation here. So this is going to be my R of B relative to A. Okay, of point B relative to point A. All right, so there's my position vectors and then also my equations for my velocity vectors. Let's get into those velocity vectors. Let's go ahead and assume in this problem, and this would be a common thing to be given at the start of a problem, that we have omega of OA. Okay, so if that's the omega of OA, it turns out that our velocity here of A needs to be moving to the right. All right, so, and those have to be kind of in harmony with each other, okay? Omega OA negative from the right hand rule, V of A moving horizontally to the right. Just noting that this is always gonna be perpendicular in fixed axis rotation. Now, as A moves to the right, AB can't get any longer, it can't get any shorter. And so therefore point B is gonna to have to drop down. Now, I'll give you some pretty robust tools in a later video, which is based upon the instantaneous center of zero velocity, which I'll help you map these velocities in a very explicit way. For right now, we'll just kind of think about the overall motion. Once again, this is going to be perpendicular to my RB. Okay, so there are two fixed axis points. So that takes care of VA. We took care of VB. Let's take a look at the elephant in the room, this relative velocity of B relative to A. Okay, so one thing that we'll need to know before we get into the, the, the linear velocity, uh, this relative linear velocity, is we do need to know the direction of this angular velocity of AB. Now, I think that you can take a look at this system here and see if A moves to the right and B moves down, then this body must be rotating in this direction right here, so omega of AB. Now, keep in mind that our omegas are for bodies, and so any point I pick on this body is going to have exactly the same omega. 
So if that's my omega of AB, and here's my R of B relative to A, I can cross them, right? So omega AB is going to be a negative from the right-hand rule vector. So if I start with my fingers sliding into the screen, and I curl them in the direction of point B, you can do that either with a three-finger or slide your fingers along the first one, curl them into the second vector, we're going to end up with a relative velocity, which is coming right down this direction here. So this is my velocity of B relative to A. Once again, this is not an absolute velocity vector. This is relative, relative to this body AB rotating around point A. All right, so a couple other things I wanted to point out before we move on and we take a look at the interactive. Um, one of those is I want you to think here briefly about velocities of connecting points, okay? So a velocity of a connecting point, so we have point A, which lies upon body OA, it also lies upon body AB. It turns out the velocity of that connecting point for either body is exactly the same. And that should make sense because I could actually map out a path of A as it rotates here around point O, and it's gonna be the exact same path for either um, that point on either body. The same thing here for point B, it's actually a little easier to draw because it's quite a bit shorter. That would be the path as B moves around C, a circle centered there around point C. And so it doesn't matter if you're looking at the velocity of point B on BC or the velocity of point B on AB, it's gonna be exactly, exactly the same. Now it turns out that we also, if you wanted to, could draw a vector triangle of these three different vectors so looking at that triangle, once again, we're going to start and stop at the same place. And so if we have VB, that turns out to make this overall system work, we'd actually find that our velocity of B is quite a bit bigger than the velocity of A. So there's my velocity of B. So I think about my start and my end point on either end of that vector are going to be the start and end point of these other two vectors in the triangle. So I have my VA coming over here to the right, and then my relative velocity vector here, my velocity of B relative to A. Okay, so that just shows that this is a vector equation. It creates a vector triangle because fundamentally there's three vectors involved. And so you could use a triangle like this and some, um, in this case, it's going to be a right triangle because A and VA and VB are perpendicular. In other cases, it's going to be law of sines, law of cosines. You can also use components. Um, I'm going to show you a technique using instantaneous centers of zero velocity, which I think is probably the most efficient way to solve most of these problems, and we'll get to that very soon. Let's go ahead and take a look at the motion here once again in two different interactives. This interactive is non-computational. It doesn't draw any of the velocity vectors, but it does show you once again, as A moves to the right, that B is going to drop down. Now keep in mind as we're looking at all of these problems that every single problem we're going to compute here in this chapter, all of chapter 16, all of relative motion with velocity and acceleration of rigid bodies, it's all going to be a snapshot of a single instant in time and how a system is moving at that instant. Okay, so we're not talking about the full range of motion. We're not talking about how uh, and when the velocities will change direction, which we can actually see that in this case, you can see that OA actually changes direction as B moves up and down. That's the kind of computations you'll learn how to make in dynamics of machines, not in dynamics itself. Okay, so if you want to carry on to that class, um, you'll need to, in order to look at the overall system motion through the full range. But we're going to take instantaneous snapshots. Okay, so B goes down, A moves to the right, and we talked about that the relative velocity of B is going to be perpendicular here, so that's relative to point A, perpendicular to AB. Okay, so the second view that we could look at actually has some vectors built into it. This is another interactive. I'll post all of these links in the notes at the bottom of the video. Okay, so this one now has the links drawn as position vectors. Okay, position vector R of A, here's R of B relative to A, and here's R of B relative to C. Now, in this interactive, it's going to work in generally the same way. Um, we're able to actually change the magnitude of the angular velocity. Um, and so I'm going to set this to be kind of a small value 
uh, in the negative direction. So matching that negative um, omega of OA that we had for our initial. So I'm going to go ahead and click this box here to look at the velocity vectors. And I'll walk through them one at a time. All right, so for right now, ignore these computations. They're actually taking into account the distances between points and the omegas and computing what the values are. But once again, we have a VA, which is to the right. Okay, so velocity of A moving to the right as velocity of B absolute goes down. Now, thinking about our relative velocity equation, we can actually take a look at the velocity here of B. So the velocity of B is going to be the sum of two things. The sum of those two things is going to be the velocity of A. Okay, so this one horizontal is basically just mirroring this exact same here velocity of A. And then we're going to add to that this relative velocity of B relative to A, where this was that cross product of the omega of body BA and also this R of B relative to A. Okay, so we can use the parallelogram law here to show that VA plus V of B relative to A is actually then equal to VB. Okay, you could draw this in a triangle. Of course, we could just move this VA down here, or you can move VB relative to A over here. We have that same triangle we did on the previous page of notes. Okay, so what this interactive allows you to do is then to change the geometry. Now, this one isn't set that the distance between B and A is a fixed distance, and so it actually allows you to grab point A. So this seems a little bit more universal. You could adapt it to a whole bunch of different geometry, but um, changing geometry, you can still see the relationship always will hold between A and B. Now, as you kind of flip the geometry over, you can see that you get very large velocities, very small velocities, they change in direction, but this really allows you to kind of visually see how that velocity equation works, how it relates um, to the motion in this system. So um, once again, this is called a four bar linkage. So four bar linkages, as you take a look, you might be wondering where the fourth bar is. We have bar one, bar two, bar three. It turns out the fourth bar is between O and C, right? Those are both fixed axis points. And so the fourth bar is essentially holding those two points um, rigid. And mathematically, we can see over here these computations of finding omega of A, B, and B, C. So what's interesting on these problems, you can actually start with the geometry of the problem and the omega of one single body. And I'll give you the tools here shortly to compute all the other omegas of the other bodies and also the linear velocities of the other points on the other bodies.